dear family and friends in Christ, may the Lord strengthen you each and every day that you may face temptation as it comes your way and fight the good fight of faith, not falling to those temptations, but being strengthened by him. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, we give thanks to you that you have given your life as a sacrifice for us. We thank you that each day, even as we go to battle against Satan, against, against temptation, and against a sinful world, that we know that you are our strength and our salvation. May you every day strengthen and support us, lead us and guide us, and send your spirit that we might be empowered to fight that temptation, standing firm in our faith. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today as we go to battle, we're looking at a little different battle. We're not looking at a battle as it comes from the outside. We've looked at four battles that come from the outside. All those battles had one thing in common, that they were the Lord's, as is this one. But this battle is different. This battle isn't from a physical enemy. This battle isn't from an external spiritual enemy, although he certainly plays a role. But this battle comes from within. I encourage you to turn to Romans 7, which we've been, was our epistle lesson for today. Because here Paul does a really good job of talking about his struggle with sin. He does a really good job of talking about the way he tries to balance things in his own life. Although it's a little convoluted, although, we, uh, although as he says it, I do what I do not wish to do and I do not wish to do, and sometimes it can be confusing. We see that he himself struggled. Listen again to his words in verse 15. For I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Maybe it sounds a little familiar. Luther talks about this as well. He calls it simul justus et peccator, or in other words, that is Latin for at the same time, a sinner and a saint. The struggle that each of us has, being a sinner who's been baptized, that battle that goes on. Maybe some of you are also familiar with Robert Louis Stevenson's book, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Although he was not a theologian as such, he certainly captured the same difficulty that Paul does. The struggle of two personalities, the struggle of, of Dr. Jekyll, who was kind, gentle, loving. On the other hand, you had Mr. Hyde, evil, heinous, and ugly, mean and nasty. Maybe we can relate. When asked for, asked for how he got the idea for the book, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Mr. Stevens said, said it was his own personality. And maybe we can relate to Mr. Stevenson's struggle as well, to Paul's struggle, to Luther's struggle, to that struggle, that tension that we have in us, knowing what we are to do, knowing what we are to say, knowing what we are to think about, and actually doing so. You know, I used to say, well, Sunday morning, Maybe on Sunday mornings we would be okay, protected from that. We're in church together. But it didn't take me very long to realize that that was a fallacy in my own mind. How many of you on the ride to church this morning, as you were coming to church, found yourself sinning? You don't have to. And Tell me what it was. How many of you, when you sat down in your pew and you noticed someone else was sitting in your pew, were maybe a little perturbed? How about... That person that you see, maybe it is every Sunday, every other Sunday, and they said something to you last week, last month, 32 years ago, and you haven't forgotten it. I know, it's, we have long memories, don't we? No, that's, it's not just when we're in church, though, either, is it? It's in our day-to-day -day lives. How many of us have become pretty good at bending the truth? 90% of what we say is true, but there's that 10% which we kind of the fudge factor. That part that, well, it won't make that much of a difference, and it sounds a little better that way. And we tell ourselves it's okay because 90% of it's true. How many of us talk about wanting to have a heart and a passion for sharing our faith, but can't remember the last time we did so? Or what about that question of forgiveness? How many of us have held a grudge for years, things that someone has done, have done to us in the past and still not let go of and yet receive the forgiveness of God. It's interesting, isn't it? Because the list could go on and on when we think about our own lives. 
It doesn't have to be things at church. It can be things in, our, in, in the people we meet each day. But we know this struggle. We know what we're supposed to do, but we don't do it. We know the way we're supposed to speak to one another, and we don't. And we see that, and we know we should. But like Paul, we struggle. And if you re- read just a little beyond, just to the end of our text today, Paul called it pretty well. Oh, wretched man that I am. Paul recognized that he was despicable, that he was two-faced, that the way he was living his life as a sinful man, that he was losing the battle. He was losing the battle within. And how many of us can say that we're winning? How many of you could say that you're winning that battle? Oh, I think we'd like to. It'd certainly make life a little easier, wouldn't it? If we said that we were winning the battle, that we were not like Paul, chief of sinners, as he tells that young pastor Timothy. But let's be honest with ourselves, if we can be. What does it mean when we say we're wretched? It's easy to say, I'm wretched, but not think about it. It's easy to say, I'm despicable, but say, I'm forgiven. But when we look at it, when we look at temptation in our lives, in our hearts, the battle within, we realize how often we lose that battle. We realize how often it's not the devil's fault. It's not the world's fault, even our sinful nature. It's our very own responsibility. And sometimes we don't even try. Sometimes we don't even try to face those temptations. We just lay down, giving right into them. Maybe you know what I mean. Sometimes you get angry at your spouse and you don't talk. You had a long day. So you watch something on TV, you shouldn't. And what about you? Where, what temptation has you that you can't stop? That you realize that you are falling into? We've all got them. Oh, wretched men and women that we are. And sometimes we, we try to, we try to pass the blame. We try to say that it's the devil's fault, or we try to say that it's the world's fault. If, if that wasn't on TV or on the Internet or wherever it might be, well, I wouldn't have done that. Let's be honest. Really, it comes back to our sinful hearts. Sometimes we look at other people. We pass judgment on them. We look at their lives and we say, at least I'm not as wretched as they are. We're wretched light. Half the guilt with twice the sin truth is, when we compare ourselves to others, sure, we can easily weasel out of our sin. But when we hold ourselves to God's standard, we realize how far we have failed. We realize that we have not faithfully kept his word. We've not faithfully kept his law. We realize that we've given in to temptation, that we've not fought that temptation in our lives. Like Paul, it seems like we're fighting a, com- a losing battle, doesn't it? But Paul go- doesn't end there, does he? He doesn't end with a lost battle. Let me read just a little further after he calls himself that wretched man. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. It is not our battle. Because when we fight the battle, we lose. We are weak. But Jesus is strong. We are powerless. And he is unyielding. Didn't the kids sing it so well when they sang, Jesus loves me this morning. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak. But he is strong. We are weak. But our Lord is strong. We lose, but he wins. When the battle is the Lord's, it is a battle that we will win. But when we try to fight the battle ourselves, when we try to face temptations on our own, when we try to live it and without Christ, we will lose. But thanks be to God in Christ Jesus that he has won. And he has removed the guilt and the shame of our sin. 
through his own precious sufferings and death. Today in our gospel reading, I think it's a familiar one to many of us, from Matthew chapter 11. We said, come on, Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. Well, and I'll read a little more of it in just a moment. But I want you to think for a moment, instead of just about the struggles you have with your family, with your friends, with your neighbors, instead of thinking about the pains and st- st- suffering, think about temptation as we read those verses in, from Matthew 11. I encourage you to turn there with me. Come unto me, all ye who, are la- who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's not only talking about those day-to-day emotional, physical battles. But he's talking about our spiritual battle, the temptation. And he takes that temptation and he exchanges it with his freedom. With his strength. But first we have to face our sin. First, we have to face our wretchedness. And as John says in his first epistle, if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For when we confess those temptations, when we come before the Lord, He hears our prayers and He answers us. He gives us the strength that we need. And He cleanses us from the sin that continues to live on and attack us. And he again, as we, were, as we did in our baptism, drowns that old Adam or that old Eve who lives in us and again strengthens us that we might be God's sons and daughters. That he, we again might be renewed. And Paul, he says, as those renewed people of God, we can face sin, t- sin's temptation. We can face the temptation of the devil and even our sinful selves. And he says, no temptation has overtaken you. That is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. A way of escape that we can endure it. God gives us the way out and it is through his son. God gives us the way out and it is through him. When we face our temptation and we realize we're being tempted day in and day out, hour after hour, day after day, we realize that our Lord has given us the the way out, that escape. And it comes through him, through his Holy Spirit. He sends his spirit that he might strengthen us, but he also gives us tools, tools to fight the devil, tools to fight that temptation. As often as we receive God's body and blood in the Lord's Supper, we are receiving receiving not only forgiveness for our sins, restoration as his children, but also we are receiving strengthening for our faith. We are receiving power to overcome temptation. When you feel yourself starting to be tempted, turn to the Lord in prayer. Pray for that strength in the Spirit. Pray for that strength in in Christ our Lord. As you slip into the temptation, open open the Word of God. Sometimes we undermine or underestimate the power of God's Word. We don't realize how powerful it is against the temptations of the devil. But truly it is. It is the power of God's word that speaks in our hearts and our lives that is able to stop temptation in its tracks. In this side of eternity, we are going to fail. But that's not an excuse that we should keep putting up. Because God gives us strength. Because it is not our battle alone, but the battle is the Lord's. And although this is an internal battle, although, it, although this is a battle we fight day in and day out, God's strength never wanes. It never, it never, he never grows weak. And he gives us a promise. He gives us the promise that he will once and for all, when we, when we die and join him in eternity, that he will put to death that old Adam and Eve. He will put to death that Mr. Hyde, if you will. And he will give us life eternal with him forever. Where we'll never, neither experience temptation nor sin, but only the joy of the resurrection. So with those folks on the first Palm Sunday, We say, Hosanna, Lord, save us. And we know that he has saved us through his son, Christ Jesus. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus Christ, we give thanks to you that you humbled yourself, taking on human form, riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, hearing those loud shouts of Hosanna, being glorified, knowing how the week would end. 
knowing that those, those words of Hosanna would be turned to crucify, that the palm branches would be turned to whips. Lord, help us never to forget your sacrifice. Help us to each day know that you went to the cross so that even as often as we fall into temptation, giving into temptation to sin, that by your sacrifice, you have provided us salvation. May this be our hope as we cry, Hosanna. Lord, save us. Amen.